live from the ESPN 1280 studios in San Luis Obispo, it is time. It is Living the Run. We're not just chewing the fat, we're getting rid of it. We are your home for everything health and fitness. Living the Run is being brought to you by Running Warehouse, CrossFit Grover Beach, Artie's Pilates, and in partnership with the American Cancer Society and the Hill Slow Coalition. Here are your hosts for Living the Run, Ryan Ferran and Paul Tarek. And welcome back to the leanest and meanest radio show on the airwaves. It is Living the Run Health and Fitness Radio. I am Ryan Ferran, alongside the Olympian Paul Anthony Tarek and our executive producer Max Woodcock. So glad you are with us. As you are every Wednesday night from 6 to 7, right here on ESPN 1280, The Ticket. A very fun show for us to get to tonight. We'll talk more New Year's resolutions coming up. We're very excited for our guest who will join us once again in studio, a friend of the show, San Luis Obispo County Sheriff Ian Parkinson. A lot of people don't know this about the sheriff. He is a black belt in Hawaiian Kempo, trained with Chuck Liddell and John Hackleman. Actually, a sparring partner of Chuck Liddell and would help him get ready for his big UFC fights. So a very extensive fighting physical history in MMA training, and he's a big fitness fan. So we are thrilled to have the sheriff on. Back on when he was on last time, he was the sheriff-elect. So we will talk to him about that, uh, about working out MMA style, working out with Chuck Liddell. What was that like? And what's going on in San Luis Obispo County as far as the sheriff's department is concerned. A lot of great things going on. Uh, He's done some terrific work already as sheriff in the community. New programs and some really interesting stuff. We're also going to talk a little bit about the Kristen Smart case. Some... uh, some slightly new developments with that. I know a lot of people are interested in that. Remember, Kristen Smart went missing in 1996, Cal Poly student. So that case has been kind of looked at again thanks to Sheriff Ian Parkinson. So we're going to talk to him about that, fitness, and much more. If you have a question for the sheriff, you can text us at 805-242-1280. That is the number to text, 805-242-1280. Also, five immune-boosting superfoods for the cold and flu season and some unique foods on that list too it's not the usual oranges vitamin c and that sort of thing so some unusual foods that will help you boost the immune system and help fight off those colds a lot of my friends have a cold that seems like it's a double dip cold they say they're sick for about a week think they're getting healthy and they get sick again they need to pay attention to this list and also 10 Fitness Myths, according to Outside Magazine, a very interesting article I read a few days ago when I was at Barnes & Nobles. Checked it out, saw it online, and the comments online were very interesting. It's kind of what I would call a controversial uh, article about these myths. A lot of people swear by some of these things that uh, this magazine is saying, well, we don't think it really works. Do they, do they just come right out like bold face and say, don't do this, and then go ahead and expand on it a little later? A little bit. They're saying it. A little teaser, a little, oh, no, this is the worst. Thing. Aerobic is terrible for you. Well, what we meant was. Well, one of the things that you know I, I've said on the show a few times is the one of my frustrations with the health and fitness field that obviously we're doing this radio show within is that you'll have a study on one thing saying X, Another study saying why. So they use their studies, you know, to, you know, back up their findings. But, you know, if you look deeper into that subject, you can find a few other studies contradicting them. But this is their list. So we'll go over it just a little bit. We'll give you the top 10. We don't have too much time to dive into it. And there's one on there I know you will agree with. Um, One of them on there when we had Jordan Hesse on, University of Oregon, local favorite around here, uh, runner up there. She talked about taking an ice bath after all her workouts. She takes several a week to help with recovery. According to this list, doesn't do much. Doesn't do anything. Boo! Placebo effect. So we'll go over that top ten list. And there's placebo. A... I'm sorry. That's terrible. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, we, we will, we'll delve into this later. I'm going I'm to hold it. Doesn't placebo mean that it does still work, just for different reasons? No, it means it only works because you're thinking about the fact that you're doing it and it's working. Then didn't it work? No, no, it didn't work. Your mind made it work, essentially, is what they're saying. But then it worked. Right. You know what? Sure, sure, it worked. No, <laughs> it no, sure. We'll call it that. But I, I get what both of you are saying. Yeah, I mean... It, I mean, even if it's not technically doing what it's supposed to be doing, but if it still does 
what you think it does than it actually did what it's supposed to do. Correct? And my head hurts, man. <laughs> I had, oh, there were too many there were too many dids and that and do and uh, a little too much philosophy. Little too much philosophy. Right. Yeah, that's right. Young grasshopper is not ready yet. So yeah, I get your point, but we'll go over that. And uh, it's interesting. The article is on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash living the run. So you can check it out and you can see the top 10 myths that we'll go over in just a couple minutes. But the comments underneath are really interesting because some people say, you know, I, I've been doing this for years and it works. And I swear by it. And I, I don't care what you say. I, I'm going to continue to do it. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold my opinion until we actually talk about this. How's that? Oh, for one, for one time, for one time in your life, and then you will unleash. I'll unleash the fury. <laughs> in a fourteen-minute Paul Tarek rant. No, no, just unleash on Outside Magazine. Don't shoot the messenger. You love to shoot the messenger, which is me. So don't, don't shoot me. And we'll take your thoughts on anything we're talking about, or if you have a question for San Luis Obispo County Sheriff Ian Parkinson, you can text us eight zero five two four two. 1280. And no, he will not fix tickets. Okay, do not email that question. I already know. I, I know of like five people right now that are going to email in. Hey, hey, can he can he fix a parking ticket? No, the answer is no. He can. Will he? No. Yeah, he, <laughs> he can, can. He won't. Um, okay, so recent shows we've had that you can find on our YouTube channel or on livingtherun.com. Last week we talked about Ayurveda which means science of life. It has its roots in India, dating back more than 5,000 years. We talked to Holly Padov about uh, this unique philosophy on health and wellness. It offers a natural and balanced approach to optimal health. That actually has a lot of hits on YouTube already. So Ayurveda, you can find that segment with Holly on livingtherun.com. We also had Chuck Fiorentino on a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, talking about the Bataan Memorial Death March, a very cool marathon through the desert terrain of White Sands, New Mexico, to honor the heroic service members who defended the uh, Philippine Islands during World War II, sacrificing their freedom, health, and in many cases their lives. Chuck was on talking about that, and that was a really cool event that he was talking about in race slash marathon that was dedicated to our veterans. Mike Hartman stopped in studio a few weeks ago talking about his heart attack. He suffered at just 32 years old. Very interesting conversation we had with him. We also talked about his dismissal, dismissal at St. Joe's as their head football coach, so that's been getting a lot of interest as well. On the website, Samantha Pruitt, our uh, Iron Woman, she just posted about getting her Iron Man tattoo. She got the a lot of Iron, I guess, ultra Iron Man competitors after they complete that heroic feat. They get the M tattoo for Iron Man, and she got her Ultra Woman tattoo and made the M into that pretty cool tattoo. Would you ever get... You have a tattoo, don't you? I was going to say, would I ever get a tattoo? I have a tattoo of the decathlon on my arm. And would I ever get a tattoo of what? Do you? Yes. What is it? What is the What is the tattoo exactly? It's, it, it's a tattoo of the decathlon. It's can on we my arm. bust that out and show it's our on, YouTube viewers? It's on, the, it's on the internet. You can you can easily find that. Where is it? On your arm? Yeah. What is it? I mean, you say it's other decathlon. What is it? Ten events? It's all or? ten events of a decathlon in order. Really? Yes. How big is that? I don't know. Like Each of the guys are only about an inch and a half tall or two inches tall. So they're all character oh, figures? Yeah, busted That's out. That's what I like to see. YouTube, make, we need to create some YouTube uh, buzz make, here. Make sure you show the camera over there. You can see this later, probably tomorrow, livingtherun.com. The decathlon tattoo. But that's something I was, I was, you know, considering I don't have a tattoo, and I don't think I ever would get one. But if I, oh, wow, there it is. That's a unique design. I like how they put all those together. God. By they, you mean me. You still have yes. You still have yeah, a pretty right. good gun show. I can't <laughs> lie. That's so annoying. Is it decathlete? I know what it is. You the worst shape in my guns. life. So no, you designed that tattoo I, as well. The, the true story behind this is uh, I saw another decathlete when I was in college. He had it. Uh, he had he had a similar one. He just had one that incorporated all ten events. His were was more of a real tattoo. Like the guys had actual shape to them. Uh, it was pretty obvious that they were guys and what they were doing, and I liked it, but I didn't like the fact that it was just very obvious. And uh, you know, it was more wavy lines and it was more round. I wanted something a little more aggressive, uh, so I sat down and just kind of doodled some stuff on some paper and sketched. And every every now and then, I'd pull it out when I was bored. And uh, it, it turned out in a um, we were in a truck stop in Ohio. And on, a, on the back, I still have the placemat, too. On the back of a truck stop placemat, I finally figured out how I wanted the guys. And then I drew them all out and was like, man, I, I, I really like it. I finally, it, it took me probably five or six months to do it. And it was like, I finally figured out what I wanted. I took it to my buddy. He was a graphic design uh, major. And he put them all, he put all the characters together, filled everything in. And uh, 
sometime. I think we had an overnight, like a midnight, uh, or we had a red-eye flight coming back from California one year. I decided I am going to get this tattooed on my arm. I'm really going to do it. So the next day when we got back, I went out and I got a tattooed on my arm. Was this when you made the Olympic team? No, no, this was, this was before that. This was when I was uh, a senior in college. Uh, the reason was, and, the, and, the, and I was always opposed to tattoos. I was like, I'm never going to get something like that because I'm never going to like it. But at this point, I figured, you know, track and field had paid for my education, got to go to college for that. Uh, and, it, and up till then, I had, I had been, you know, across the U.S., you know, you know most of the states in the union, had competed uh, up in Canada for a meet, had met a lot of great people and thought, you know, I, I got to, even if I don't go any further in this event, I, I'm still going to, I'm never going to forget this. So, you know, I figured it was a part of me and I went out and got it done. That's pretty cool. I was thinking when I saw Samantha's tattoo that if I did accomplish something that big of a feat, that it would, I would consider a tattoo. Because I'm, I'm not an anti-tattoo guy, but for me, I wouldn't really get one. Unless maybe I was memorial, memorializing somebody, something like that. But I wouldn't just go get, you know, like a dolphin on my lower back or something ridiculous. You could get a stack of pancakes. Remember when you were the pancake-eating champion in like 2007? That was awesome, man. That was a good year. That was a good year. That was year. a good year. You could get like, the syrup on top with the melted butter. That'll be great. All right. I'm going to ask <laughs> Max if he has a tattoo. Do you think he has one? Uh, I would say no. I would say Max does not have a tattoo. I do not. You do not. Would you get one? Most likely not. Like you said, it would take something fairly significant, maybe like a loss of a family member or something like that. But even then, I, I don't see myself getting one. It's not that I'm against them. It's just never really been something I was interested in. I think I had like a two-month phase where I was like, yeah, I'd love to get that tatted on me. And I quickly died out when I saw my friends getting things tattooed on them. And I was like, that looks kind of lame. You, li you live vicariously <laughs> through your friends' mistakes. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I learned from them, and they were all a little bit over eager to try and look cool. And I was a little bit more hesitant. And Yeah, it's definitely more socially mainstream right now where it's, you know, before you'd see somebody with a tattoo or two tattoos, and it was like, wow, yeah, all right. But now it's like every basketball player and football player in America has got his entire arms, you know, just everything is tatted up. And, it's, and that's fine, and if they all mean something to somebody, that's great. But I, I think it, in 15 or 20 years, you know, the, the leopard you have walking up your arm, like with the claw prints in it that was cool 20 years ago, is not going to be cool anymore. Unless it, unless it means, if it means yeah. something to you, it's great. But if you walked in and were like, man, I like that leopard, th third from the top on the right. Yeah, I like that one. I want that tattoo. The right closest there. thing I ever got to a tattoo, and it was pretty close. I think I was, I think I was 18. No, I was 17, because I had just come back from Fiji. And they had a, this expression over there. It's called Sanga de Langa. And everybody would say it to everybody else. And it just means kind of love life, good living, you know, enjoy your day kind of thing. And I really liked that expression. And I thought about it for a while. I had this spot I wanted to get it on. And like two months later, some guy who didn't even go with us to Fiji got it tattooed on him. And instantly I was just like, no longer do I want that on my body. And now I'm really like ashamed that I even thought of it for a second. So I say it now in mind. I don't tat it on my body. Just, just as, a, as a way to make you feel better, if we found out you had that tattoo, we would make fun of you profusely until you probably cried. <laughs> I don't think I would cry. I feel like I, I if I was confident I've, enough to get a tattoo, I'd be confident enough you, to take you were your confident, verbal abuse. You, you were confident enough at 17, but now you're going to be like, sang in the lingo. Where I get this. I that still love this. the expression. I mean, just being there and these people, these people have such a, a positive attitude, a positive outlook on life, and they just, anytime they meet each other, it's kind of like a sang in the lingo. That's yeah. not the worst tattoo. I've seen some bad tattoos, oh. and, and the one that tops the cake for me, and if you have a fitness tattoo, marathon, ultra, triathlon, Ironman, let us know. Text us, 805. Send a picture. Put it on our Facebook page. You may win something. Uh, this girl, we were at a party one night a couple of years ago, and somehow we got to talking about tattoos, and she pulled down her lower lip and had a tattoo on the inside of her mouth that said a curse word. So I ask, why in the world did you get that? She said, oh, it used to be a joke with me and my roommate, so I thought it would be pretty funny. Yeah. Your mom needs to wash your mouth out with some soap now, every day. I've never seen a more... I that is was, the worst joke. That is just terrible. That's <laughs> every terrible. day. I knew one guy who was a friend of mine who got game over, tattooed on his eyelids, because he wanted to, when he died, when his eyes closed, it would say game over. You should have waited till you should have waited wow. till like the day before you died or left that like in your will. Go ahead and tattoo this on me. Hey, have you seen okay, I, I can't believe it's bad, huh? Have you seen, <laughs> that is terrible. Have you seen fail blog? No. 
Are you are you serious? Of all the websites in, on on the planet, you haven't failblog.org. I'm not. We are in no way represented by them. However, if they'd like to <laughs> contribute to the show, we're more than happy to accept their uh, donations. But uh, failblog.org, and then they have a link on their website that uh, you can you can click on it, and it's like fail tattoos and it's like tattoos where things are misspelled <laughs> like like lame tattoos where like you're looking at it like like you said you know a, a curse word in the lip is nothing compared to this site it wow. is absolutely I, nothing i, I, I had a friend out. who had like a beautiful compass rose tattooed on him guy mixed up the east and the west oh the tattooer <laughs> Uh, fatal. But you usually they, they stencil that. we got to move on. But they stencil that and they say, okay, how does this look? Then you have final approval. Give us your worst tattoo, 805-242-1280. What's the uh, worst one you've seen? People of Walmart.com, by the way. That always comes to my mind when I, you were talking about that <laughs> fail website. That is a hilarious website as well. Okay, quickly, the five immune-boosting superfoods to help you get through the cold and flu season via the Huffington Post. Number one on the list. Garlic. Garlic's history as an infection fighter runs long, and it was actually used as an antibiotic during both world wars. Thanks to the sulfur-containing compounds found in each clove, garlic is very strong against drug-resistant E. coli infections, fungal infections, and parasites. Don't forget vampires. Yeah, I was going to say it wards off vampires, too. Yeah, that's good. Yet another reason. Number two, wheat germ. I told you these are unique items on the list superfoods wheat germ is one of the richest vegetarian sources of zinc an important mineral that is involved in nearly every aspect of immune system regulation it also helps maintain healthy skin and mucous membranes the body's first barriers to infection number three brazil nuts brazil nuts are the richest source of selenium a nutrient that helps to form selenoproteins a powerful antioxidant that helps prevent cellular damage from free radicals that means selenium may help prevent chronic diseases like some cancers heart disease but selenoproteins also play a role in protecting the immune system by helping to form infection fighting t cells number four i've never even heard of this i've read so many superfoods lists mushroom barley soup Max, uh, sounds like something old, you would eat. Good old mushroom barley. Sounds good, actually. In one of your exotic foreign trip locales. <laughs> Mushrooms and barley are both high in beta-glucan, a type of carbohydrate that's found on the cell walls of fungi, yeast, bacteria, algae, and plants. Researchers say the beta-glucan can stimulate the immune system by mimicking an invading pathogen, which in turn improves the function's of two types of immune defense cells. It's like practice for your immune system. Ah, look, I'm a disease. It's like nah, a little I'm vaccine. Almost. Yeah. The fifth one on the superfoods list that will help you fight off colds and flus this season: raw kale salad. Raw Love kale. It. Raw kale is one of the best sources of vitamin C and has the added benefit of being low in sugar and high in fiber. An overall healthy choice. Now, why raw? You ask. Vitamin C is very sensitive to heat, breaking down the nutrients and making it less effective. So raw is the way to go. I was going to ask that about the garlic, too. Does that need to be raw or can that be cooked? I mean, because we had somebody on that said when you cook things, you lose the majority of the nutrients in them pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm not sure the full article. More details on this is on our Facebook page as well. Facebook.com slash Living the Rum. They have some advice as far as the RDA for some of these as well. But the five foods, garlic, wheat germ, Brazil nuts, mushroom barley soup, raw kale salad. Very interesting stuff. Those articles on our Facebook page as well. Okay, when we come back, we will talk about the 10 fitness myths, according to Outside Magazine. And we will have the San Luis Obispo County Sheriff Ian Parkinson in studio talking MMA fitness, his sparring and training days with Chuck Liddell, and much more. We'll take your text about the worst tattoo you've ever seen, 805-242-1281. Living the Run Health and Fitness Radio returns.